about what the butler saw. What is this? What is the story? What's what are we looking to get with this show? Laughter. <laughs> Lots of laughter. Love it. It's Love a black it. comedy. It was written by a playwright named Joe Orton, who didn't live very long. He uh, had he died under rather tragic circumstances. He was murdered by his lover. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he only lived to be, I think it was 37 years old. Um, he, he had a reputation for very out outrageous comedy and what the butler saw is outrageous it's how would you say not politically correct okay <laughs> uh it's it's a it's a real it's a british farce everything they say the most outrageous things with just such a plum <laughs> for one of a better word it's like this is normal <laughs> that is normal, right. uh, but but you know it's very abnormal to say the least. It's about a psychiatrist and his attempts to seduce a a new secretary, and what goes wrong? Well, <laughs> where do you want to start? <laughs> oh my goodness, the this he he manages without giving up too much away. He starts to get uh, closer to her. Mm -hmm. And then things start happening. His wife comes in. His uh, an inspector from the government comes in. A policeman comes in. A thief comes in. It's it's quite insane, really quite. A lot insane. of chaos, as you said. A lot, a lot of, of chaos. chaos a lot, going a lot on. of people um, changing into each other's clothes, and and being just totally outrageous. And there's straight jackets and wheelchairs and my uh, gosh. Um, oh yeah, yeah. It's 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 somewhat complicated to to stage, but uh, and, but God bless them. My actors are doing a terrific job. They really are, and I, I'm hoping that it'll be really funny and that the audience will walk out having having had a good laugh. We could use a good laugh about now, you know. Absolutely, and I'm always. I think laughter is. You always need laughter in your life, but especially during times like this, it's 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 definitely uh, more welcomed. And the chaos and, and the the fact that this is a difficult play to stage. Let's talk about that when you take on this role. Is that the first thing that you think about as you're reading the show and thinking about the space at the heights? Is okay. How is this going to lay out? How am I going to bring this to life in the setting that we have? Well, that's one of the first things that I think of uh, because you want you want it to be smooth you know you have a limited space at the heights it's not a mm -hmm. big big stage area so there's there's somewhat of a compression that you have to achieve and i i think uh gary and michael uh gary vanderputten who is our set designer and and builder uh and michael genove who's who's assisting him uh, have done a wonderful job so far. I'm going to see more of it tonight. But there's like three sets of doors and there's a cutaway for a couch and there's furniture, of course, which all has to be sort of laid out so that the actors don't don't kill themselves <laughs> <laughs> because there's a certain amount of running around and, and there's back and forth in and out of doors, you know, mm -hmm. which is, you know, tip, somewhat typical of, of uh, you know, partial comedy. You know, they, duh, 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 duh. <laughs> <laughs> but God bless them. The actors are, are just doing such a great job. Um, and with this COVID thing, we've had a couple of folks mm -hmm. who've, who've had uh, uh, trouble with either being around people who are, were exposed or they, they themselves being exposed. And it's come down to now, it may, it, unless I, I get a positive, I mean, a negative uh notice from one of my actors i'm gonna have to replace him and, and yeah. it, it's a shame because uh, this fellow emory lawrence i've worked with him before at, over at american theater of actors he's a wonderful actor and he was doing such a great job so how uh, do you how do you address that when you first started the show even the 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 general um not uh am, well i guess the general atmosphere around covid was a little bit different it felt like you know i'm sure when you were ca when you were casting the show and starting it and thinking about it the omicron surge wasn't yet in play and so now it's mm. here so how have you dealt with that kind of upheaval and 
you know, wondering what's going to happen with my cast. How do I keep people? So like, what has been, have you had to form last minute backup plans or how have you guys adapted to that? Well, change? Our, our last minute backup plan, plan as of today is, is, well, I, I will be doing the role. Mm-hmm. Um, because I'm familiar, I, I don't think it's fair to to bring in another actor now, uh, and then have the possibility. It was just pointed out to, to me by my stage manager, Maria Lana, mm-hmm. uh, that it wouldn't be. She didn't think it would be fair to bring another actor in and then have the other fellow turn negative. And, right now, right, right. You know. Uh, and she said to me, you know, you know, the play, you know, the lines. I mean, it'll be sure. a little different, but she, th- she thought, and I, and I kind of agree with her, although I'm, I really would rather just sit back and watch the show. Of, co- of course. You know? Yeah. Uh, Cause I had to do it once earlier this year, fill in for somebody, but it was just for a night and, uh, and I, it was okay. And I, and I, you know, I did a, a good job, I guess, for, for what it was for one night. I also had to do it once before with the Heights, with uh, another play that was directed, and the the, the actor had gotten injured on oh. opening night, and, oh. and yeah, so the director Ed Healy, who you may know or not know, mm-hmm. uh, came over. He hands me a script. He says, "You think you could learn this by tomorrow night?" <laughs> and I went, oh, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, but I did, and then it came off, and all that. But I really would love to see Emery up there in the role because of he's course. he's worked so hard on it and he's he he knows all his lines and we were working out you know some of the physical business because there's mm-hmm. you know people getting carried off and getting bumped around and placed in straight jackets and stuff like mm-hmm. that and it, it, it's it's crazy but hopefully I'm hoping I'm hoping I'm hoping that he will get an, a negative uh, result soon. Fingers but, crossed. You know, uh, hmm? Fingers crossed because for yes. you, for the show, for the actor, obviously the ideal situation would be for him to be able to come back. And like you said, yeah. all that work that he's put in and, and the time and also just the camaraderie and the feeling of the cast knowing his moves, him knowing their moves. I mean, you just you just hope that at the end it can work out as all of you have planned. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed. Not only Absolutely. that, the costumer will go crazy because... <laughs> True, true. Emery and I are two very different shapes. <laughs> <laughs> he's smelt and he's smelt and fit looking, and I'm an old, you know, I'm an old plumber. <laughs> you're a handsome man, Thomas. Don't you don't you knock yourself down? You're a handsome man. Look at those suspenders that you're rocking. Nobody can have <laughs> suspenders like that. Let's talk about the rest of this cast for a little bit. Obviously, we have it. We have Emery, but what was I mean, this is not the first show that you've directed, and so no. you've gone through auditions before. Do yep. you change your auditions and what you're looking for based on the show or do you have a very specific kind of audition process and what was it like for this show oh for this show it was it was relatively simple when i the first show i directed i wanted everybody to have sides uh i mean you know bring come in with with a two audition pieces you know mm-hmm. a comedy and a drama and, and i've kind of streamlined that after reading this play i said to myself because I did a Tom Stoppard play, and and it was it was it was a waste of the actors' time, really. Um, I felt for them to be learning another monologue, mm. what, because the the material itself uh, lends itself to audition pieces. And mm. what I what I had fun with was watching the different actors take their readings of it, and 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 how they sort of you know, married the words to their actions and all that kind of Shakespearean stuff. But just, I got a sense of if they wanted to play with this. Mm. And, and and that for me meant a lot in the audition. And I had some wonderful, wonderful auditioners. Unfortunately, it's a small cast. And I had a, you know, make, and I, I saw people that I knew that I had to say, um, I, I'm not going to okay. use you this time, which bothers me because i'd like to see everybody work right uh, but i i went with what i felt was my best my best uh choices and hopefully the audience will uh, enjoy them i know i do i'm i'm constantly laughing at rehearsals well that's uh, a good sign because if anybody 
can guesstimate, like you've read this play, however many times you've gone through the show, the steps. So the fact that you're still laughing at it shows the strength of the writing, because a lot of times we become, we become desensitized almost when we're constantly going over and over and over it, it kind of loses its magic a little bit. And that's, that's actually one of the challenges as a, as a director is to can, continually keep yourself as objective as possible to say okay is this really funny or is it not funny because i've heard it too many times and for the actors as well how do i keep this fresh in a performance manner so that i don't become repetitive in what i'm doing as a performer and i engage as much as possible to get the audience into it as much as possible exactly. yes they varied themselves a lot and they've, they've, they've taken direction that i've asked them to take and it's and and they've really and they've they've fit into it, so to speak, and sunk their teeth into it. And they really um, absorbed it and used it. And they're, they're just, they're, they're discovering things for themselves now too. Yeah. And it's great. It's great. Awesome. It really is. And they're having no. a lot of, uh, hopefully they're having fun. I, I think they are, but you know. <laughs> well, I think you can, you can tell when you see the energy, when you feel the energy of the rehearsals, when they're when they're into it it's bringing the material to life i don't think that yes. you would be enjoying the rehearsals and and laughing as much as you are if they weren't enjoying the performance they were putting into it because that all that all feeds into itself right if they're not enjoying the pieces or if they're in a bad mood or whatever it affects what they're doing on stage and therefore it affects what we see as an audience what you see as a director and what you're getting from them so oh for sure yeah for sure <laughs> and no, I think one of the hard, you know, mentioned it earlier is you don't like to tell people, no, I find that's got to be one of the hardest parts about directing is in the audition process, especially <sighs> when you know the people auditioning and you're like, I mean, I love you, but I, I can't, I'm going with you're somebody not, else. You're How not do you do that? quite right. Well, you, you have to be honest and, and, and with yourself and say, and look at the show and, and look at the actors and say to yourself, who is going to be best for this production, mm -hmm. for this role? It's not that they're not good actors. Of Every course. one of those auditioners that came to me was a good actor. They're all good actors and they all worked very hard, but some just had this little something that um, it, it sparks. It sparks when they're reading the lines mm -hmm. and, and you have to try and encourage that and, and be honest with the other folks, because I, I I have primarily now uh, there's let's see uh, one I have Heather I've worked with before uh, and Matt I've worked with before, but I have four new cast members. I mean, wow. some one actor I've worked with in another venue. But that was Emery, right? You said you worked yeah, with Emery, him yeah, else. Emery <laughs> Lawrence, yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's a terrific guy, but but the other three are are new people, and they are wonderful, Amazing. and and I I think it's it's good you know it it's fun to be with all your friends and, and everybody you know and you work with and all that, but it's also good to bring fresh faces yes fresh faces to the theater, so that well for one they get exposure. Mm -hmm. so that they maybe somebody will see them and say, "Hey, mm -hmm. you're just right for the role I have for Steven Spielberg." No, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. but just to, fresh blood gives fresh ideas too. Yes, and, and fresh energy. And, yeah, and fresh energy. There's no, there's not a stale performance coming out of this cast, and you. and and I love them all. I do. That's they can awesome. be They can be truly, truly uh, mind boggling sometimes. I'm like. What? <laughs> but that's so yes, wonderful okay. to see the fact that their performances and their choices that they're making are keeping kind of almost you on your toes. You're like, oh, that's interesting. That's it. Because that also then lends itself to you like, oh, you know, I didn't think about it that way. That might be a choice that works. Let's try that out and see how it is. So it's it becomes this wonderful collaborative atmosphere that brings in these things that you might not have thought about. And even if they end up not working, at least it's like, oh, well, we tried it and we thought about something else and we were we were able to play, which again, keeps things fresh for the performers and 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 exactly. for the rehearsals as well. Um, yeah. I, I always, I, I like to encourage you if they have an idea, okay, <laughs> let, let's try it. Let's try awesome. it, okay? And, and sometimes I've said, no, uh, uh, this mm -hmm. is not gonna work. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like, because they can't see themselves, mm -hmm. you know, 
and you know i'm i'm not you know the lord high almighty or anything like that but my stage manager and i are watching what's happening and sometimes they may have a great idea but when you see it it's not working and you have to be honest enough to say no you you're not seeing it from out here in the audience mm -hmm. and this is what we always want to give our best for the audience yes because yes, they're the yes, ones that yes. are paying paying for the tickets yeah, and yeah. they they come to they come to see a good show and we're going to give them one we definitely are and it's all about too what the story that you want to tell and how you want to tell that story making sure that yes we can vary a little bit and have have you know, we can change things up, but also you don't want to, you don't want to veer too far off where then all of a sudden people are like, what's happening? It feels like this is coming from all different places, you know? Well, it is. <laughs> that, uh, well, that's one yes. of the challenges of this nutty show. Is finding that balance. <laughs> well, and like, and like you said, you know, I was in a, I was in a recording session the other night and the drum, we were recording a, a drum track for this band and the drummer was playing and he, it, what he did was fantastic. But then when he came in and listened to it, he goes, oh yeah, it doesn't quite work for this song. And I think that's uh, important for as all of us creatives in, in these different environments, whether it's music, whether it's theater, whether it's uh, film and TV, it's that the choices aren't necessarily bad. And they're not, it's not that this, they don't work. They just don't necessarily work maybe for that particular point. And maybe it's because of a certain vibe or energy that you're going for. It's maybe a certain tone. So it's like, it's all these things have to come together. Like you said, it's not just my show, it's our show. All these elements come together to create the perfect synchronicity 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 synchronicity, synchronicity <laughs> for what you want to create for the show that's being put on and like you said this is a show that is it seems to be total chaos there's so much happening how do you contain all that chaos in a way that the audience isn't overwhelmed or thrown all about where they're confused but you still keep everybody on their toes and guessing mm. we don't <laughs> 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 no. chaos at the heights february 4th we, we, we have we have <laughs> chaos now um we, we just try and you know <laughs> we try and stick to the blocking and, and stick to the lines but sometimes it, it it's uh well well there we go you know uh it's it takes a little discipline you know the mm -hmm. the actors and 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 my my job as a director is to keep them focused on on what's supposed to be happening but it it the play is is somewhat complicated and the the script that we have it, it's a wonderful script but there are mistakes in it and mm -hmm. we we've fished out a few you know with entrances and exits that, that we've kind of ironed out but we're still ironing out and we don't open thank heaven until a week from this coming friday because Got time. we're still we're still ironing out some of the rough edges mm -hmm. and then if they're going to throw this old man into the mix because of the silly covid uh <laughs> keeping everybody on their toes you know you never know what might happen with this show yeah your director's really gonna be watching it now <laughs> okay <laughs> and is that is actually is that hard for you in a different way you know when you're directing if you have to fill in for that role how do you balance being a director and making sure that things are going smoothly, but also being aware of like, oh, I've got a cue. I've got these lines. Like, do you just then give it over to your stage manager and say, tonight you are directing, you've got to run the helm of the ship because I've, I can't be in, in, in these both minds in both mind spaces at once. I've, I, I've, I'm well, this is my first time doing it uh, as a director. Have, okay. Okay. Well, where I've been a director and, have, mm -hmm. and that's not even necessarily happening yet. Emery, please. <laughs> come back with like negative. Said, fingers crossed i'm right fingers crossed yeah fingers crossed but it, it, in that case you know i have to, i have to say to my stage manager mm. maria lana okay it's your show tonight because well, once i i'm i'm in actor mode i have to be listening for my cues changing clothes and yes, and what have you and and i have to i have to stay as an actor because i want to work with my team Mm -hmm. to, to and i want to be there for them right you know so like if 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 they have a cue coming on or if there's a bit of business i want to make sure that i'm ready for them and I, i'm yeah. not going to worry about who's sitting in what row or what have you uh I, i'll leave that to the stage manager and let let her take care of it and she's she's fabulous she really is ms Audelino. <laughs> yes <laughs> she's and great. that's also it's really important to have people around you when you're putting on a show a cast that you've 
can work with and the cast that feels comfortable with you where you can all collaborate together and also people that are behind the scenes that you know you can trust them to do their job and rely on them because otherwise if you're on edge and you're, I mean, that, that's, it's just not conducive. So it's, it's always amazing. And I see that so much, so much in the, in the shows at the Heights is that everybody, once you're working on a show together, it's just a beautiful collaborative atmosphere where everyone is just there to support each other. And I, and I love seeing that. And I want to come back to something that you said earlier about the, mm-hmm. the chaos of this show. And you said that it is not politically correct. And there's a lot of like, there's a lot of, let's say, I guess I would maybe out there as you said, black comedy, dark comedy, um, taboo comedy in this show. How do you approach that knowing that, you know, society as the years go on, things that are taboo are no longer, then maybe they come back to being taboo. So how do you go through this show and decide, okay, we're going to keep it as is and things are going to run as they are, or maybe we should be aware of this moment in the show and be extra sensitive to this or, or change this. I mean, how do you, how do you, take the show that is taboo in its time that could still be taboo now and and put it on knowing that maybe it, it won't hit the same way i mean how do you how do you take that on well we make adjustments where necessary mm-hmm. uh there's there was one adjustment we had to make with the script uh and and we made it and and it, we didn't change any lines the lines are still there just mm-hmm. different a different sort of um, description. Okay. I don't want to give too much away. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but where necessary, we've adjusted to be a little more sensitive to the uh, modern era. But but at the same time, um, to also be true to the playwright. Because mm. mm-hmm. the playwright is, is, even though he's long gone, like... Uh, like several of them are, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, he, he took the time to write this and, and, and uh, perform it, and it, and it was yeah. it was success, successful when it opened. Um, it was outrageous, and it's still outrageous. And he meant it to be outrageous. Mm. So, with that in mind, I'm, there may be some criticism, there may not. But we'll take it. I uh, take it with a grain of salt, right? Because uh, this is black comedy. It's it's not um, Neil Simon or, or, or somebody like that. This is Joe Orton, and he mm-hmm. had a very strange sense of humor. <laughs> but I feel like that strange sense of humor is also on purpose to make people slightly uncomfortable, to create conversations and questions, and so it's that finding that balance of okay, this is a little bit out of date and this is, this is, this, this pushing boundary may be no longer useful, but overall these sentiments or these ideas, or maybe this moment can still be used to create a conversation and a question that's still useful and is still applicable to this time. And, and, and it is, it's such an interesting balance to find because of how quickly things change and the norms change and thoughts and ideas change, you know, between when this was written and now as you know, when it's being putting on today being put on today absurdity <laughs> mm-hmm. absurdity, now, absurdity. How long, thomas how long have you been directing um uh, this is only like um oh let's see uh one two three four this is i i believe my fifth production that i'm directing yeah so i'm i'm not a seasoned i don't consider myself a seasoned you know expert director I'm still feeling my way, just like the cast is. <laughs> <laughs> and what made you decide to get into directing? Was there a certain show that you're like, I, I, you suddenly had a vision for it, and that yes, you there to was. It? Yes, there was. Uh, I I did a workshop of a play that I've always I've always enjoyed, uh, uh, a workshop production, mm-hmm. and um, I just had such fun with it. It was fun with the casting. Uh, and I said, oh, okay, well, <laughs> this works, that works. And I had, I, again, I, the, the uh, actors were wonderful and they, <laughs> we just had a lot of fun and a lot of laughs. I haven't done any really serious drama. <laughs> oh, that was gonna be my next question is uh, the, the shows that you've done, have they been all, you know, a certain, like are there certain shows that you are more attracted to than others? And it seems like if you said no drama, you seem to be attracted more to comedies then. 
Well, I'm 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 attracted to absurdity. I, okay. I mean, I love things like Waiting for Godot and and uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, <laughs> which were two of the shows that I've I had a hand in directing, and you know the absurdity of situations. I, I love I mean I love a good drama. Mm -hmm. uh, Eugene O'Neill, uh, I would mm. love to direct. Uh, there there is there are certain limits with his writing. Because because of the length of his plays, I don't know that people have the uh, patience. Oh, yeah. Patience, patience, patience yeah. To, to sit through the all the different elements that he he brings into a story. And there's other, like George Bernard Shaw is, also is another one. And um, But I, I do know they are doing another version of uh, Long Day's Journey Into Night, and they've cut it down. And I, I'd like to go and see it. Hopefully, it'll stay open for a while. I'd like to yeah. see what they do with it. Uh, but that's yeah, good. Good theater is good theater, and a good story is a good story. We just had one there um, that just closed this past Sunday, Clybourne Park. Yes. Wonderful. It was an absolutely wonderful play. The actors were fabulous, and it definitely, definitely gave a uh, pause for thought. Mm -hmm. conversation i don't know if you were able I, were you able to see it or no uh, i was not able to see it because <coughs> as i've been muting myself when i when i cough but i have been i have been sick with a cold thankfully it's not covid but i've been sick yay. with a cold and the last thing that you want to do is be the person coughing in a theater right now because even <laughs> if it's not covid you are the scorn of that area and i the last i want don't want to make anybody nervous and start to freak out and that would not be good either to be somebody that is a part of the Heights players that is there coughing and people don't realize it's just a cold. And then they're like, I can't believe they let the sick person in. So I was like, I'm just going to stay away before I become the plague of the theater <laughs> by going there because I, I'm still coughing. I just, I'm trying to mute myself and catch myself before I do because I don't want to be coughing well, for, all over this for Michelle. Very fortunately, all of our audiences have been, uh, I've house managed there too uh, mm -hmm. on a couple of shows. And all of our audiences have been very cooperative with, uh having having their vaccine proof and, yeah, and yeah. many of them have their boosters as well and they've been more than willing to share that with us yes, and everybody's yes. wearing a mask in the theater mm -hmm. so we are trying to promote safety as much as possible oh yeah Still oh give yeah everybody a good show oh yeah when i've been able to go to the shows i've been trying to make as many as possible and when i go i feel completely safe while i'm there but on the opposite end of it I feel like, how am I not going to take responsibility when I'm not feeling well? And even if, even if it's not COVID, I, the fear of being sick with a cold, somebody getting it and maybe their immune system is weakened because they've had COVID or what if they catch all uh, like, I just start to think all these, the last thing I want to do is be responsible for somebody not feeling well. And if it gets to a point where it's, so I go down that rabbit hole and think, you know what, let me not be a plague. Let me also not be responsible for getting somebody else sick. I'm going to just keep. I'm going to try and be responsible uh, and maybe over cautious and just not be, because it's really the, the coughing, especially like you can't hide that. And then all you can no. just feel the eyes burning on you. You're like, mm. everyone's just staring at you. Yeah. Um, but so, okay. So you're relatively new to directing, <laughs> thing, but obviously you are not new to theater. You've been involved in theater for a very long time. Do you remember the moment that you got involved was it a show in school was it children's theater was it helping out with somebody else's do you remember that first foray into theater that you took <laughs> yes uh, it's it might seem a little strange but when i was in kindergarten i was one of the elves in the christmas pageant and i was marching out with my hand on the shoulder of, of a the the fella in front of me and i looked out and in the audience which you know I, you know you're five years six years old you don't know but i saw my <laughs> mother i saw my mother smiling and i was like oh i can make mom happy and that just it struck me and, and then in high school we, we you know we went out and i went out my freshman year and I tried out for the play and I ended up in drag with a blonde wig and a dress and I was having a ball and I just had a lot of fun. And unfortunately, I didn't pursue it as 
as a vocation of any mm -hmm. kind uh, until I was, um, well, let's see. It was after 9-11 and my, a friend of mine and I had, uh, he was a fireman and I had gone to his retirement party and the Saturday before 9-11, and then 9-11 happened and he was on a plane out to, he was going on his way to Hawaii. And I called him and I, I managed to get him on the, on the phone. And I said, Charlie, you know, horrible things are happening here. And he came right back and oh my gosh. he came right back and we had conversations subsequent to that. He, he went down working in the pit for several months and I, I, I would get together and we'd talk. And he, he one time he said to me, Tom, what do you want to do? I mean, do you, do you what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, you know, I'm not sure, Charlie. I always had a, a desire to act. And he, he introduced me to a, like a seminar that, you know, it was like a self-discovery kind of thing. And I, and I mm -hmm. don't poo-poo it because it gave me a little bit of motivation and and somebody gave me a, uh, some information about a place called HB Studio. And at the age of 52, <laughs> I went to HB Studio and became a beginning acting student. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's 20 years later and I'm still doing it. And I was encouraged by the, the teachers that I had at HB, and, uh, some of whom have passed away since. Uh, a wonderful lady named Jean Kaplan and, and a, a gentleman named John Monteith uh, and Michael Beckett were, were some of the teachers that I had there. And they always encouraged me. Uh, they never told me I was bad or, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. They said may, maybe this, this that particular movement might not have been the greatest, but there was always encouragement. And, and especially Jean Kaplan said, you got talent, oh. but you got to use it. You right. gotta use it. So she said, So go audition. She she go. <laughs> Get out so there. I went and auditioned and I got a I got a part in a play by William Inge. Uh oh God, what's the name of it now? Oh, oh, shame on me. But I played as a doctor and I had 18 lines. <gasps> 18 lines in my first right off the bat? Stage show. I was like, holy cow. And Gene <laughs> and Jean Kaplan. And some of my uh, fellow students at HB, they came to see it, and she she complimented me on it, and I was like, I guess I'm doing something right. Oh, and I've just wonderful. continued. I mean, I've just tried to continue doing something right. <laughs> I love I do that. a lot of wrong, make take some crazy choices sometimes, but that's part you know. of it. That's that's part of the whole process of life. Is you're going to make wrong choices and you're going to make wrong turns and they become a learning experience. Or maybe that wrong turn actually ends up leading you on a right path in some way. So that's just, that's what a wonderful, wonderful story. And what a, what a way to, to rediscover something about yourself and, and rediscover a passion and being, and going into it. Cause I think that that is a lot of what maybe this time has taught us is that you never know what's going to happen. And so if you want to do something, try and go, go after it, do it because yeah. you keep waiting for the perfect time. The perfect time is not going to show up and you don't know how much time we all have left. So that's very, very true. I mean, you know, you know, the older, the longer you live, the, the more you're going to see friends pass away or, or acquaintances, you know, yeah. and it, you, you got to kind of live to, 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 to each moment each moment of the day Absolutely. as much as possible and uh, i mean i'm this is my 10th year of retirement but i've never really retired right because i i mean i spent 42 years in construction in the plumbing trade but then when i was finished with that here i am in the acting trade it's part, it's part two it's just it's just it's part two you part one was plumbing and that was the main and now you're okay next time next chapter of my life it's this this is what i'm concentrating on. this is I, how wonderful and I'm so excited to see what the Butler saw, what the absurdity brought to life. It's uh -huh. debuting on February 4th. If you want tickets, you can go online. You can buy them ahead of time as well. Um, again, just a reminder that if you are going to come to the theater, 
uh, wearing masks and proof of vaccination is required. So just a heads up on that. Before I let you go, Thomas, you know, this show, I know you don't want to give too much away. I know that it's a comedy, but what are you, what do you think the audience is going to be most surprised about with this show? What pleasantly, how are they going to be pleasantly surprised by this show? I think they'll be surprised at, at the absurdity of these characters, really. The, the absolute uh, ludicrous behavior that they consider normal. <laughs> and hopefully they'll laugh at it. Hopefully. Fingers, cr- well, fingers crossed that everybody gets all the laughs and also that Emery gets a negative test and oh, can come back. Please. People, people look after that. It has been an absolute pleasure speaking with you, Thomas. Best of luck in, the, in this final week and a half of preparation for the show oh. and, and break a leg. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for doing this for us. I really oh appreciate gosh. it. This is a blast for me. So thank you guys. This is so much fun. And I, I hope to get to see you in person. I hope that I'm <coughs> no longer coughing. <coughs> right? yeah. that's, what I, that's what I don't want to be doing in the theater. So hopefully soon I will have this cough wrangled out of my system and I can not be a plague in the theater. Thomas, have a wonderful rest of your day and a, and a great week. Thank you so much. Thank you as well. Bye-bye for now. Bye.